Gary Simon here. Today I'm going to be giving you 11 UX tips for making awesome navigations. I've realized recently though, I talk too much in my, the beginning of my video. So you know what? I'm just going to be quiet and let's go ahead and Okay, number one, differentiate between the logo and the navigation. Right now they are styled very similar and you want something more like this as opposed to what you have up here. And that way it's gonna help the visitor be able to, or the user be able to distinguish between the navigation and the logo in a much more quick manner. Next up is going to be show an active state design. Right now, none of these uh, nav items are being indicated as what, what page a person is currently on. Instead, you want to create an active state. And this could be done uh, through changing the color. It could be done through making it bold, or you could do both. You could change the background color. You could add a border or an icon. So there's many ways to do that. So don't do this, do this. And this brings me to the next point, number three, is you should always have a home button if possible. Um, there's been studies performed that people just are able to navigate easier uh, when there's an actual explicit home button. And that way you don't they don't just rely on the logo to get to the homepage. Some people, they're just not aware of that. Maybe they're not very internet savvy. So include a home button. Oh yes, abrupt interruption to talk about the sponsor of this video, Scrimba.com. Now right now we're talking about UI UX topics. Maybe you're not a very good UI designer. If that is the case, you definitely need to check out my UI design bootcamp at Scrimba.com. At Scrimba, you don't just watch videos. No, no, no. You're actually able to modify code in the browser while you learn. My course on UI design features over 100 lessons that are specifically tailored to help you become an awesome UI designer, and they're packed with interactive challenges. So that's right, make sure to click on the top link here in the YouTube description to get access to my UI design bootcamp, along with many other courses by awesome instructors for a low monthly fee. Let's get back to it. Differentiate between the primary and secondary navigation if you have a secondary navigation. So right here we can see we have a split right here creating sort of like a secondary nav, but they're not styled differently. Instead, you wanna do something like this to really separate them out. So don't do this at the top, do this at the bottom. Next up, number five, differentiate between regular navigation items and a drop down or secondary sort of navigation right here. As we can see, this is bold, these are bold, they're styled very similar. So what we want is typographic visual hierarchy as I've talked about many times on this channel. So you can see it's just a lot better and it really separates uh, the things that are happening differently in a contextual manner. And number six, provide hover states. So obviously this is in relation to a cursor. So when somebody has a cursor, it's nice to have a visual representation of which link they're currently at. So do something like this instead. You could also make it bold. You can underline it at an icon, at a border, at the top or bottom. There's many th different things that you can do in order to give a person the visual cue that this is the link that they're currently hovering over. All right, number seven, Ensure that you have acceptable contrast ratios. I talk about this often. You wanna make sure that you have at least 4 to 4.5 to one contrast ratio. So up here, you can see there's only a 3.7 to one ratio. It's not enough. You need to get to 4.5 uh, on small text like this. And as you can see, if you're obviously at black sitting on white, you're at a 21 to one ratio, but it doesn't have to be that. You want at least 4.5 to one. There's various contrast checkers uh, for Figma and Adobe XD. You have what's called Stark. That's a, a, like an extension that's free that you can use. There's also numerous plugins and extensions for your browsers like Google and Chrome. And there's also built-in options in both Google and, uh, did I say Google and Chrome? I meant Chrome and Firefox uh, in terms of the web accessibility for their dev tools. Also, number eight, use hamburger menus where needed. Right here, right now, this is not needed. Don't use hamburger menus on desktops. Instead, do something like this. Here's an example where this is obviously a nav bar that would fit in a phone. You don't have enough room to put your links here clearly, so you can use a nav item. 
right here, maybe on like a tablet view, we can see we clearly have enough room to put all of the links. Obviously, the more links you have, you won't be able to. You can also use uh, a hamburger menu and maybe also put a couple links right here because you would still have the space. So don't do this. Instead, only use it when needed because it does create extra taps or clicks and extra work essentially for a user to get to your important nav items. All right, number nine, stick to known patterns that concern the location of your navigation and your logo. Stick to something like this. Traditionally, I'd say nine times out of 10, the logo's on the left and then the navigation is on the right. So don't try to be, get real unique. I also see people sometimes putting navigations like at the bottom of the page or on the side, like in a very kind of weird, obscure uh, way. Just stick to what works. Next up, make sure that your nav items are accessible with keyboard focus. So if somebody hits the tab key, and uh, they need to have a clear idea of where they're at as they're tabbing through the navigation. Now, usually it's front-end developers sometimes who remove the outline none property uh, or they add outline none. If they do that, you'll be responsible as a designer to create a focus state. And then that way they can use the focus pseudo selector in order to style that if they're not going to use the default outline that the browsers apply by default. So definitely do this. And then finally, number 11, make sure they're easy to use and they're big enough. So this concerns scale and white space. So right here, way too small, way too small. We gotta beef those up, especially for people who are on uh, mobile devices, their chubby fingers might <laughs> tap the wrong thing. So we need to make sure that we are easily allowing our users to use our navigations. Alrighty, hopefully you all enjoyed that. You learned something new. Let me know if there's anything I missed. I probably missed about 20 other items that are very important. Let me know in the comments. Make sure to like, give a subscribe, and I'll see you all soon. Goodbye.